Jay Trollkreitzer at GoHunt.com. Uh, I'm back in my little archery cave in my basement. Uh, today we're going to do a video for you on uh, how to change the strings on your bow. Um, it's a question we, we get from time to time, how often should you change your strings? Um, and really it depends, but I would say you know about once a year to be honest. If you're somebody that shoots a bow quite a lot, uh, if you're hard on your equipment and you're, you've hunted quite a few days with it, I would say generally about a year is a good time to uh, change your strings out on your bow. So today uh, we've got a Matthews Halon X, which is my buddy Chris's bow. Uh, and we're just going to put some new strings on it and run you through the process. We're going to be using uh, Easy Press Green, uh, which is made by Last Chance Archery. Uh, this is a great little economical uh, press for about 399 bucks. You can get yourself your own press. You can see I've just got a little workbench in my basement uh, I've used a couple C clamps to hook that up to. It just stays put and I use it all the time. You know, whether you're putting a peep in or you're changing strings or you are adjusting your cam timing, uh, there's a bunch of stuff that you can do on your own with your own press. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is just pop off the uh, stabilizers. This isn't a must, um, it's not that big of a deal, but for me it just removes some of the extra weight and uh, just gets some of the the equipment out of the way so it's not so awkward. This bow is uh, 35 inches axle to axle so I've got my press turned out to 36. Matthew's bows I really like. They've got these little built-in brackets on the top of their limbs which is great because you can take the fingers of these last chance uh, easy presses and you can just simply pop those right in there which makes it really handy because it gives a, a perfect uh, resting place to press the limbs on these. Uh, so before I get started in uh, actually, you know, pulling the strings off and, and compressing the bow, I'm going to remove some of the uh, screws. So the screws through the end of the limbs, which will allow me to uh, push the axles out. Uh, I'm going to pop out uh, this center piece uh, right here by the cable guide. I'm going to back those two out and pull that out so I can just simply lay those cables in. Uh, one tip, um, and this is probably a good tip for most people. If you're just getting started uh, with doing your own bow work, take a picture. So pull your phone out, uh, snap a couple pictures of your bow setup, the way the strings lay in, uh, which cable goes where, uh, which one is, uh, sits on the inside, which is on the outside on your cable guard. Um, all that kind of stuff is going to come in handy um, when you start to lay your strings back in. So that's a hot tip for you and one that I would definitely recommend is take a picture of your full setup. Uh, before you start changing out your your strings and cables because it'll help you put it back together in the proper order Okay, so before uh, I get started and actually pulling the straight the old strings off and put the new ones on uh, I'm going to pull this center piece out of the cable uh, guard system It just allows me to very easily place the cables uh, back in the grooves. Um, so I'm just going to pop those out uh, These are two set screws that are basically screwed in against each other um, Different companies may have different setups, but this is how Matthews does it so I'm going to back these out and pull this little uh, piece uh, out of the middle so that I can lay these cables back in again without any issue. Um, one thing when you're changing your strings, I would say it's nice to kind of lay them out. Every all, your, all the parts and pieces, you know, make sure that you lay them out so that you can find them again. Um, typically, I'll just drop them, you know, right behind the press here in the same order that I pulled them out so that I know that's how they go back in. Uh, but if you've got like a little bowl or something like that, that helps too. You can just throw them in to make sure that you don't lose any parts or pieces. So we, uh, we tried to pop these two uh, set screws out to pull this middle section out of the cable guard. And unfortunately, it looks like the one side was actually stripped out. Uh, so we went to the next best option, which is we just pulled the E-clip for the center pin that runs between the two roller guards and uh, just dropped it down so now we'll be able to feed these cables through um, without uh, having to like push them or squeeze them through and when we're done we'll just press it pull those back up and run the pin back through the middle so i pulled those two out my next steps i'm just going to pull the two uh, end pieces out of uh, the axle so on these matthews bows you've actually got two set screws that go in each end that screw into the axle itself I'm just going to back that out. And then uh, there's actually like a little plastic piece that it kind of sits uh, inside uh, the groove of the limb uh, up against the axle and then the uh, set screw goes against it. So I'm just going to use the end of my Allen wrench and just pop that out. You can see what it looks like. 
And you want to make sure that you lay all your parts and pieces someplace that you can easily find them. Once again, you don't want to lose them. Uh, I'll just get this end um, screwed out, and uh, after that, we'll be ready to press the bow. And uh, we'll pull out other strings and cables out, and we'll get to replace them. So before I actually press the bow and I start to replace my strings and cables, uh, I would go through and record all of your specs. So things like the length of your D-loop so that you can uh, match that again with the new D-loop. Uh, the distance from your peep to your knocking point. That's something that you're going to want to record uh, while the string is still on your bow. That way you can go ahead and put the new one in, new D-loop, new peep, and it exactly will match um, your previous setup. Because if you've been shooting this, shooting it well, you know that's what you need. You want to be able to replicate that. Uh, also, things like axle to axle. Uh, again, this is a Matthews Halon X. You want to be 35 inches axle to axle. Uh, you've got a brace height of seven inches, so you want to be able to match that again. Um, so once you put the new strings and cables on, we'll set the bow to spec, and then we'll go ahead, put the D-loop and you know knock set everything back in. We'll be able to pop his peep right back in the exact same spot, so it should come right back together uh, and match exactly the way this bow is set up. So before I pull the string off, I would tell you that I like to replace things um, generally one thing at a time. So where your strings are easy to, your string is easy to get to on these Matthews, it's just one piece. Uh, I don't have to pull the uh, actual axle and pull this apart uh, to get to these yokes. First thing I'll do is I'll take my string, uh, I'll make sure that uh, I have the, you know, the right ends at the right end. So you've obviously got a longer piece of serving here at the bottom, so that'll be able to help me tell which end of the string is the bottom portion. Uh, it's obviously longer so that you're going to have some uh, protection against the string dampener here, the rear dampener. So basically, um, I'm going to pull that string out. Uh, one thing to be aware of is when you get your new strings, your string builder is going to pop those in a package and they're going to use either some twist ties or some paper clips to keep them together. Uh, they have these twisted at the proper rate, so you don't want to untwist your strings or your cables. You want to maintain the twist that uh, is originally put on them when your string builder sent them to you. You may end up adding some twists later on to get your cams in time or when you tune your bow, uh, but you want to maintain the twists that are in it um, from from the set that they said to you. So uh, I can tell, let's see, so you got a cable here. Um, this is obviously my string because you can see I've got these little speed knocks. So if you look at that string right there, you can see that the amount of serving, you can see this longer hunk of serving here going clear to the end. He's also done us a favor and tied in uh, a piece of serving here uh, at the knock point. So now I know that this here is the top portion of my string. This would be the bottom portion that goes over the bottom cam. Um, and like I said, I'm actually going to replace this and do that before I actually pull the axles and start getting to the cables and these individual yokes. So to get those out, you're just going to press the bow a little bit. You don't have to press it a ton. Uh, it's not like you have to bring those way in to get it loose enough to pull it off. You're just going to take your old string. Again, I like to keep my old strings for backup just in case something happens. Uh, you want to be aware that you don't take any twists out of it, so pull it off exactly the same way that it was on your bow. And keep those together like that. And you can actually take a, like a twist tie or a paper clip or a hunk of serving whatever you can find. Sometimes I'll do that after the fact. Uh, so I'll just take like a simple owl wrench, run that through the two of them so it's not going to untwist, and uh, I'll just lay those by the wayside. So I've got my new string here. I know that this is the top of my string here. I've got my peep location. Longer hunk of serving at the bottom as it wraps over the cam. So all I'm going to do is just going to undo the twist tie, and I'm, like I said, I want to be particularly careful that I don't take or, or any twists out of the string or add any twist to the string. So I want to make sure that I keep that together. Typically what I'll do is just take one piece and stick it in my mouth.
I'm going to take it, pull it, the slack out of it, kind of lay it in the groove of the cam. It's not that important yet, but it will be. I'm just going to stick it through the limbs here. This is when, uh, you know, taking pictures of your bow um, and kind of doing things one step at a time. So one string at a time, you know, just do one and then the other and then the other. That way you're not have a, you know, a bowl that's fully disassembled and you're trying to figure out how to put it all back together. So one step at a time uh, can help. So you're just going to lay the string in the grooves. Now, before uh, I get to pulling the axles and everything else, I'm actually just going to relax the limbs uh, and let this string sit in the groove. One thing when you're using a bow press, you always want to pull the tension, uh, the slack out of the string. Make sure that all your cables and your string are in the groove of the cam. You don't want to relax the bow when they're sitting outside of it because it will you know, land here on your axles and bend your axles or potentially damage a limb. So I'm going to make sure that all the strings and cables are in the groove. Just going to kind of relax it. Just take a look at it and see how it looks. Everything looks like it lines up. Looks like our center serving is in a perfect spot for our burger hole. Looks good. Alright, for this next part, um, we're going to have to pull the actual axle of one cam. You can see with this yoke system that Matthews has on their bows, uh, they've got a little uh, splitter here and you have a small yoke that goes over two wheels here at the top. So you do have to actually pull the axle um, from this cam. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the bow, pull the axle out, uh, lay the cam to the side, and then I'm actually going to start uh, pulling this cable through and replacing the yoke. So I can kind of walk you through how I do that. So first I'm just going to press the bow. Uh, to get these axles out, uh, typically I'll just take an Allen wrench that is slightly larger than the hole of the axle. I'm just going to take the Allen wrench and push the axle uh, completely through. You want to be careful as you're doing that. You don't want to put so much pressure that you pop a limb out or, or something like that. But uh, it's not too bad of a process just to push the axle through. There's your axle. Just gonna, like I said, I'm going to lay it aside so that I know exactly uh, where it's at. Uh, at that point, your axle's out. You got your cam free. Um, so I'm just going to pull that cam out. And uh, at that point, what I'm going to do is just kind of lay it uh, to the side. And uh, I'm going to pop these two yokes off. And like I said, um, I try to do one at a time, um, not make it too complicated. I'm going to pull the uh, end piece off of this end of this cable. I'll be able to pull it through uh, that cable guard. So that's your yoke. You know, you want to keep these just in case you, uh, you have any issues with your strings in the future. You always have a backup, which is handy. So you actually have to feed this through this piece here. So you're going to have to pull it through. Again, I try to make sure if I can, it's not a huge deal, but you try to make sure that you don't take or add uh, any twists out of the string or cable. Lay that to the side. So your next step is you're going to find your yokes, which are these little guys right here. Uh, what I like to do is lay those in there close to the middle as you possibly can. At this point you can actually uh, replace your cam. So you can go ahead and put the cam back in and uh, you'll be able to put these two over the two side wheels that go over the edge there. You want to get those so those are you know approximately level uh, on these Matthews bows where that yoke sets. You want that yoke to sit perpendicular uh, in here in your cam system. 
Uh, I try to line the two servings up here so they're approximately exactly the same. You got your two yolks here. So at that point, I'm just gonna make sure that these don't untwist. Just take an Allen wrench and stick them between the two so there's no twisting in there. And at that point, I can actually re replace my uh, cam. So to replace the cam, you do the exact same thing as when you pulled it out. Um, I've done videos before on Matthew's top hat system, but I should probably touch on it right now. Matthew's does have this top hat system. You have these two internal sleeves that sit on the inside of their limbs. And that's a little shim system. So if you're having trouble tuning a bow, if you've got a left or a right tear uh, when you're tuning, you can actually use these little top hat kits and shim your cam one direction or the other to help tune your bow. Um, my Matthews VXR a couple days ago, tore it apart, did some, some stuff with it. I was getting a right tear uh, and I was able to just take a top hat system, bump my cam back to the right to adjust for that tear and, and get that tear out. That's another little cool feature of these Matthews bows. So before I put the cam back in, uh, I am gonna have to lay these yokes that sit on either side of these. It does help sometimes if you got a buddy <laughs> to kind of help you out, help you hold uh, everything together while you're, while you're doing it. If you don't, you just got to make do. So just make those fit. Make sure that they fit. Everything's inside. I'm just going to slide my cam back in. And at that point, I can go ahead and reinstall uh, my axle. Take the axle, just going to slide it back through the same way that I pulled it out. Um, this time I'm going to have to look and see. Looks like i got to tweak it a little bit. Sometimes you do have to give it a little bit of a love tap. Sometimes you got to have like a little bit of rubber, rubber mallet or something to tap this back through to get it to, to start. But once it goes in, it's not, usually not too bad. I'm just gonna squeeze this in. Now you got your yoke, and you just want those to lay inside these tracks. It's not a big deal if they're not quite yet, because I'll have to go back through and move them uh, anyway. Basically, what you're gonna do now is you're gonna take your opposite cable. So this is a cable. Both cables are exactly the same. Uh, all I'm gonna do is uh, spread that out. Once again, I'm gonna make sure that I don't add or take any twists out of it. So, you've got this little yoke system here. I will take the uh, loose end here that you can see, the one that is not served. Obviously this end here, uh, you can see that it's served. It's a served loop end, so that's gonna be my cable end that hooks to my cam. I'm gonna take this loose end here. I'm gonna just slide it up through the middle here. I'm just going to stick this in my mouth so it doesn't untwist. As I pull that through, I want to make sure that I get right through the middle of all those. Yep, so I'm going to pull that through. Got my finger here. I'm just going to take this in, slide this through. I'm going to pull the slack out of it very gently. Again, these fibers, I mean, they're basically plastic, so you want to be careful with them. You don't want to, you know, catch any edges or make any fraying or anything like that with them. I'm going to feed this through my uh, cable slide here, make sure that I've got that in place. I'm going to take this, I'm going to run it underneath the cable, this other cable, and again, this is when you can get a little bit confused about what goes where uh, on your bow. That's when having a picture is really nice if you have to go back to your phone to double check it. I'm just going to take this into the cable and I'm going to hook it on uh, the bottom post. Make sure that these two are in the grooves once again before you do anything with your bow, before you're going to relax the limbs again. Um, you want to make sure that all the cables, everything is in the grooves, in the in the string track, so that you don't uh, bend an axle or break a limb or something like that. So that looks good. I want to make it, like I said, I want to make sure that this little um, 
string separator here in the middle. The yoke sits perpendicular uh, with the riser. It looks like everything looks good in line. Check all my posts, everything's in line. And before I actually do the next one, I'm gonna relax this and just make sure everything lines up and looks good. Which it looks like everything is looking great. I just got the cable changed, I got the string on. Uh, one thing I wanted to note is you wanna make sure that your cables are laying on the right tracks. That's when you know taking a photo of your full setup can help you as you're replacing them. Um, for me, you know, I just have done it a bunch of times so I kind of remember, but you do want to make note of that and make sure that they're not, uh, you know, crossing somewhere away or rubbing or something like that. Um, but yeah, you do want to make sure those lay in the exact same tracks. Uh, before I do the next cable, uh, I'm actually going to replace these end screws. Uh, this end screw and the axle. I'll just take that little washer that pops in on the inside of the, can the limb. A little bolt. I'm just going to replace that before I go to the, the bottom end of this bow and replace the other cable. To do the, uh, the next cable, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to press the bow. Going to pop this axle out of the bottom limb. Uh, and at that point, I will pull off the yoke. Uh, I'll pull the cable off and I'll just replace it like I did the other one. I like to do things one at a time. That way I don't get confused on how the whole thing goes together. So uh, once again, you just want to pop that yoke across the little plastic center portion of it. Again, you want to make sure it's even. So I'll just kind of eyeball the servings, make sure that they're par parallel uh, to each other and that uh, when this plastic piece sits within the bow that it's perpendicular um, to your riser. Uh, it can, like if you have some funky tears, so if you're paper tuning your bow, and uh, you're getting some weird tears, um, you, do, you might want to check this to see because if you do have a little bit of added tension one way or the other, it could be pulling one side of your cam system harder than the other and you can get some weird tears. Uh, I haven't had too much issues with it, but uh, mostly you just want to make sure it's uh, sitting in there, you know, straight perpendicular to your riser that's going vertical. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, put the yokes over these two end pieces here and here. And again, they don't have to sit exactly in the grooves as of yet. It'd be great if they did, but it's not that big of a deal. So I'm gonna put them on before I relax the bow. Mostly I just wanna make sure that I get them on so that I can get the cam back in. So we got the cam in. Just take the axle. So I'm just gonna run it right through the middle on the back side. Again, I might have to eyeball go and once again I'm going to run the loose piece up through feed the other end through pull the slack out of it and then I'll hook uh, the other end of the cable up to the top cam all right so got the cable I can't stress enough you do not want to take twists or add twists to the cable or the string you may have to to time your cams later uh, but when you know quality string builder is going to build these two specs, so the exact specs that the factory has set for the strings and cables. And the closer that you can put those on your bow, um, two spec, uh, the better the process when you start to tune your bow. So make sure that you don't put any twists in or out.
All right, so we're almost done. I'm just gonna press it a little bit further so that I can make sure I get these uh, little loops here in the tracks. And again, you want to make sure that all your strings and cables are in the track. I did one time press my brother's bow, which was a Bowtech, and uh, I had removed a string stop, I think, or a cable stop on one of them, and I went to draw the bow back <laughs> to test the draw length on it, and I hadn't put the thing back in, and I rolled the cam all the way over. I bought him a new bow for that. Okay, so I got all my strings, my cables on. Uh, I've got the yokes in. Uh, I like to double check those and make sure that they're fairly flat, sitting perpendicular. Uh, make sure that all of the strings, the cables, the yokes, everything are in the grooves so they're not gonna pop off when I pre or relax the bow. Uh, also, make sure that this middle portion, um, the string and the cable, or the two cables are in the right grooves. Uh, once again, if you have to go back and look at your pictures, uh, it's worth doing that. But my next step is I'm just going to relax the bow real slowly. It looks like everything is good to go in line. Uh, my next step uh, that I'm going to do, it looks like everything is good. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about timing your cams. So essentially what you want your bow to do uh, is you draw your bow back. You want those two cams to roll over so that your stops, your draw stops, whether that's a limb stop or a cable stop. Um, these Matthews bows have a cable stop and I can kind of point that out here in a second. But right here on the back side, as this cam rolls over, it's going to contact your cable. But essentially, you want those to roll over at the same time, and I'll talk to you about how to get those in time uh, if they're not. Uh, but the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press the bow again, um, just enough so that I can put this middle uh, axle back in. E-clip. Take a screwdriver, put it on the back of that E-clip, make sure that you're holding it so it doesn't jump off, just pop it right back on. So everything is back in place. Um, I've got the cables, strings on, everything's in line. Uh, the next thing I'm going to look at real quickly before I start putting in peeps and you know tying in um, knock points and D-loops and those kinds of things. So Matthew's bows actually have these little timing holes and most bow bows will. Uh, if you shoot a Hoyt, they'll have a mark on the cams that indicate where the cable will run through the cam. And it's just a reference for you to uh, get your cams in time. Um, it's gonna depend ultimately when you tie in your knock point and your D-loop uh, on getting those cams to roll over at the exact same time. But this is just a nice indication before you even get started into those other processes of where your cam is at. So at this point, if I wanted to manipulate this cam, uh, I could do a couple of things. I could take some twists out of the cable, which I never want to take twists out of the cable. Uh, I just got this set. I don't want to untwist it more uh, at this point. Uh, so actually what I would do before I even get my peep installed and my, my D-loop and my knock point is I might add a couple twists to the string uh, at each end. Uh, to advance that cam. So I'm just going to kind of pull you and see how this works. So if you add twist to your string, you're obviously going to shorten the string, which is going to move that cam uh, around closer and kind of see how that works. So in the same vein, if this uh, was opposite uh, and I wanted to adjust it this way, I could shorten the cable. So if I twisted this cable, you could see how it would pull that cam away. So those are your two means of adjusting your cam timing, your cables, uh, also your strings, but primarily your cables. Um, but what you ultimately want is you want both cams to roll over. As you draw your bow, you want these cams to roll over. And you can see right here, this is going to be your cable stops. So these are going to rotate over and they're actually going to contact your cable here at some point. So what you want is both your top and your bottom cam, this is a two cam bow, you want those to contact as they roll over at the exact same time. 
So we got the cables and the strings exchanged. I mean, everything looks pretty good. We may have to do some tweaking uh, as we set those up. And if you guys want to follow along, we have some other videos on how to set your bow up. Um, you know, whether that's how to put a knock point in or D loop or you know any part of that build process, we have videos and articles that cover that kind of uh, stuff. Um, but yeah, this is essentially how you're going to change your uh, strings and cables. It's a pretty easy process. You could do it on your own. Uh, like I said, a new press, about 400 bucks. Uh, and you could do all your own work yourself without any issues at all. Uh, if you have any questions about Matthew's bows or how to you know, change your strings or cables or about materials or any kind of questions that you might have that I can answer for you, feel free to drop those in the comments below. Be happy to answer them. Uh, we would love it if you would like and subscribe to our channel. Uh, once again, this is just how you, you change your strings. You gotta do it every year, so. Do it.